All right, wonderful people, it's my pleasure to bring to you once again the Q Sports Show on Asen TV. My name is Gideon Olano, and uh, so many things we are, we are lined up for you today. Joaquin Dada will be with me, and it's always around to join me to look at uh, things happening as far as Q Sports is concerned. Uh, Joe, how are you? It's good to have you on the show again. My pleasure, Joe. My pleasure. Um, Joe, let's start with uh, some of the news. Uh, I know that uh, last week I started uh, the fact that the uh, African Games, uh, where in Morocco uh, seems to be dominating the, the snooker events, and nothing really has changed. I mean, that is just their yeah, exclusive reserve. They decided to do that. So uh, I'm thinking, uh, by the time another country decides to uh, host the next edition, maybe we can have. Um, Nigeria is there. Who knows? Uh, obviously, it's expected with the absence of South Africa from the All African Games, that is Nuka mm -hmm. with the All African Games. The only country that would have given Morocco a good fight for their money on home soil with South Africa or e Egypt. Mm -hmm. Egypt has not come to the <laughs> Egypt has participated. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, like in most sports, um, uh, most, since it's Nuka, this is the first time we're having. A Q sport or this and the beautiful thing about it is even the world professional billiards and snooker association is even monitoring what is going on wow. right there yes. in at the All African game. And that was good for the sport. Okay. It's very good for the sport. Um, so Morocco has led the way. Uh, we hope that the next source of the All African games will allow snooker to be part of it. And maybe they will even Ex expanded to allow other Q sports to be part mm -hmm. of the All African Games. So sports like Nine Ball Pool, A Ball Pool, or Black Ball Pool can come to the All African Games. Uh, yeah, so for me, I think, uh, like you said, I hope, like you said, that we really hope that the next host will consider uh, the Q sports, especially with snooker. Because we know the politics of some of the sports. Of sports. Uh, you know, with some countries want to put sports that they know they have comparative advantage. And why well, if you drop from I don't think if that's the consideration, mm -hmm. I doubt if Morocco really had a comparative advantage over South Africa when it came to snooker. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. But, but, um, but uh, the event shows that uh, it's Morocco that is winning. That is winning all the events. It's only the South Africans that can explain why they did not. Yeah, I they did think not so feature so. in that event. But it also tells us that the African uh, African. Uh, uh, bigger than Snooker Confederation has a lot of work to see to see do. Uh, many African countries do not have Snooker Federation. Mm -hmm. They have associations, but they do not have Snooker Federations. And for you to be part of the African Bigger than Snooker Confederation, you need to have a federation. And your federation needs to be affiliated to your sports ministry. And uh, or you need to be affiliated to the local Olympic Committee. In Nigeria, we do not have a federation. In Nigeria, we do not, the, the association seems to be comatose. It seems to be comatose. It's the Snooker, uh, it's the Snooker Pool Players Alliance that is coming up trying to see what direction they can put into the sport. But I think for the SVP, their own major focus is implementing the ranking system, hoping that the ranking system will build a structure. Okay. And if we can get a structure, then the structure will produce a federation. Then we can get a federation, we can now go into, into Africa. But I think it's important that uh, for those of us who play some of these sports, uh, the time has come for us to prove that many of these sports are intellectual sports. So it makes no sense if I play intellectual sports and uh, I'm not showing internet okay. in what I'm doing. Really. It shows that uh, there's something wrong. Well. I know that uh, the pool sports as well, the snooker pool, uh, all the pool sports, they got massive following in Nigeria. Yes. And that is... Especially in Ebo Pool. It's very Ebo Pool. Ebo Pool is the most popular pool like, okay. uh, Q sports mm -hmm. in Canada because you have it almost in here. In some parts, we have Ebo Pool. Um, people have been encouraged to play in Ebo Pool. Okay. Uh, black Pool, not too many people know about Black Pool here. Uh, but it's a version of pool, and they are all competitive sports, recognized internationally. Snooker is still classified as 
an elitist sport, even though it's not an elitist game. Because one reason I think is because of the size of the because of the equipment. Okay. A snooker board is big yeah. and it's expensive. Okay. So it's relatively expensive. But it's, we have the advantage. Because most of the equipment that we use in Q sports are made for wood. Okay. And wood is local to us. Everywhere we have wood. So if we develop the sports, guess what will happen? We are going to develop what I call customized furnishing. Because or usual form uh, furnishing or exotic furnishing, any kind you want to describe it. Okay. So you can imagine if we can now begin to produce some of the equipment we have pool tables, snooker tables, cues are a little bit more technical, you know, mm -hmm. they're a little bit more technical because uh, uh, your, your game is as good as the cue you're using. Okay. So if you're using the lousy cue, obviously you have the lousy cue. That is it. All right, let's also still talk about some of other events happening that uh, you're still locally though, because uh, I know you might also have one or two things to say about uh, other events, but I'm, I'm sure of an event that took place uh, last weekend, uh, which was uh, the major edition of the Nike uh, Town Club Super 4 Challenge. Yeah, the top four. Yeah, the top four, and uh, it was amazing. And uh, I could see the the kind of enthusiasm is created among the players and they were looking forward to that and maybe uh, they will also, uh, they can't wait for the uh -huh. next edition, another one, that is uh, good for the sports. Yes, the, the beauty of that event is like prove that if we have uh, a, a proper ranking system in Nigeria, we will build the nice structure because uh, Nikon Town Pool or Nikon Town Creation Center is uh, it's an affiliate of the Suka Players Alliance and is the first bar or club to have the computerized ranking system. And with the computerized ranking system, now the players are playing for points. Okay. It's a point system. So if you do not have the points, you cannot play in certain games. So now the top four highest players on the player calendar of that bar because there are two parts to the ranking system. So you have the national and you have the local. Okay. So for the local is what you do in the bar. Okay. For the national is why we aggregate all the local together and give us a cluster of data. Okay. And that cluster of data we can describe this as the national. So at Nikon Town, they held the first of the major edition of the top four eight ball pool. This is where we had uh, Charles Abezi play uh, Babatunde Adeko. Udukoya play. Uh, we had uh, we call him Josh Smart. That's uh, Chijoke Isuru play. And we also had uh, the quiet uh, Joshua Brune, who ordinarily. He's a very quiet person. Okay. Uh, he, he also played. Um, the another beautiful thing is that we also had a draw. We also had a draw. Okay. And because there was a draw, like you have in other sports, so that to just create the right balls, so that there must be activity. Okay. And uh, the draw made in the first match, you had uh, Udukoya play against uh, Moses Lane. Charles Abrezi, who is the highest ranked player. Okay. It was a walkover. We do not know why we were in not show. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether it was a matter of, oh, he was scared to play Charles Abrezi or for anything, but he did not come. But the second semi final, which was the match between uh, Joshua Brunner and uh, Chief Barrister Chijoki Isuru, was it was great to watch. You see, it, it shows that if we do it right, if we do it right, because we, we had guests come from outside, okay. the guests that came from outside. So what these players play, low budget tournament, very low budget, mm -hmm. and in a very tight space. And it was great. And even the post-event party wow. was another different kettle of fish. Wow. Because the event ended at um, about 9 o'clock. And surprisingly, you won't believe the players partied on to about 2 a.m. And 
What else do you want from sports? That is it. That is just the comradeship, the, f- the fellowship, and above all, the competitive spirit. And there was a shot that was in the final shot that gave uh, Chijoke Isio the victory against Brumen. Oh my! It was um, a screwball. The the object ball was not directly facing. The, the pocket. The one that I think is in the pocket. So it's either Chijoke cuts the ball, and if he cuts the ball, the ball might just kiss the pocket and. That, that will be you. And not, not kiss, it might just cook the ball. It might, it might, it might, so can call it cooking. Okay. It might just cook the ball for the opponent, mm-hmm. and the opponent will eat it like the love rice. Mm-hmm. But that's what we say. It's like the mm-hmm. love rice, mm-hmm. like you have a penalty. And uh, but he didn't do that. He wanted to double on the cushion. And people, a lot of people just wondered whether what the, this guy was up to. Was up to. And he doubled on the cushion, and it went straight into the pocket. Mine. The, the fans and the spectators. When it went, why? Because you see, uh, that is what you see. That is the excitement. Mm-hmm. That is like, it, that also proves that if we can develop this thing for that, we can have this as televised sports. Yeah. If you now increase the sports content, diversify the sports content we have on Nigerian television. And what else do we, are we looking for? We need local content for sports on Nigerian television. It's of showing all for it. So that's good. I think for me, I think it was a good one. All right. It was a good one. Uh, we'll go on a short break right now, and uh, what we'll be doing is that we'll be talking to the winner of that particular event. Uh, his name is Charles Agbesi. We'll be having uh, we'll be having a one-on-one discussion with him. Don't go away because uh, it will be interesting. And joining me right now is the winner of the maiden edition of Nikon Town Club Super 4 Challenge, Charles Agbesi. Charles, thank you very much for coming around today. Thank you too. Um, Charles, how did you feel winning uh, the tournament, the, the maiden edition? Well, 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 it's an amazing thing for me to win the tournament. It's Actually, I didn't expect that I'm going to be the winner ball because you know when it comes to game, you can you just try your best. But God is for we all. God is I mean the your best will bring out uh, the winning. Mm-hmm. So I just thank God for everything. So I didn't expect, but I came the winner. So we thank God for it. But 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 you were the. Top rank, you are the number one top player. I mean, the top rank mm. actually doesn't mean when it comes to competition, the game can change. Mm. You understand? So that's just what I want. It's an amazing thing. I'm very happy and I'm glad about it. Right. Yeah. Oh, looking at uh, the full sports, uh, when actually did you? How did you learn how to play this game? Wow, actually, I started. Sometime around 2001 in EJ, Police Barrack, where my salon was started. Okay. Uh, behind my salon, there's a, a pool spot there. That's where I started learning, and I, I love the game so much. That's why I put more effort. In fact, when I saw the table in Nikon Town here, 
I'm very, very glad about it. That the way I started playing, that's how Mr. Joaquin Ilada used me as the uh, board man okay. uh, because I'm always there playing with people and all the rest, and I win them. So, at the time, that's how I started. Yeah, I was even going to come to that question because um, I, I know that the club never had a pools uh, section before yes. until when. Um, this, um, the man behind the Snooker and Pool Alliance uh, came introduced it to the club. Yeah. Since the pool section started at the club, what has changed? Actually, since the pool started, since they brought the pool to the clubhouse, there's a change in sales okay. and people, it drives so many people around the clubhouse. Okay. That is what So you can say that see. there's been kind of activities and activities, activities uh, are improving for well, actually you know, so, so and I believe with time things are still going to be more better with this kind of competition. Uh, of course uh, looking at your semi-final game mm -hmm. you got uh, a walkover. Yes uh, could good. you say that also helped you to uh, uh, get into actually the like that guy since we are playing like uh, six uh six uh, games mm -hmm. i know definitely that i'm gonna win that guy because he has been playing me from time i am I'm the one that even trained him he wow. never knew how to play snooker before wow. i'm telling you because i remember the day we did uh, the draws he exactly. challenged you it's that uh, tomorrow uh, that something is going to change during the tournament exactly. so i was looking forward to see to see I was going to be trying to watch him as somebody that is he's weak. He never wanted to face me <laughs> for the challenge. That was I see. He ran me. You know I'm going to disgrace you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charles. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Now let me ask you. There, there's this introduction by um, the um, snooker and pool, uh, snooker uh, pool players alliance about. Um, the ranking system there. Yes. Mm. What has the ranking system done to that sport in the club? Wow, the, the ranking system is making more of us to be more consistent with the game. Okay. Uh, it makes people come more and more consistently to come and be playing so that they can win and go okay. up. Uh, and that's what I've been saying. Uh, and really, has it affected your game? The, the fact that there's a ranking system now, the, the, ranking the, system, the ranking system actually since after the tournament, there are some people when I beat them, okay. my my uh, rank, mm -hmm. the, the rank they give me, so just always one point. Okay. Uh, because those that are, that are below me, mm -hmm. anytime I play with them, if I beat them, the, my point is just always one. Okay. And well, if I beat people that are close to me, mm -hmm. at least I get like two points. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid, because well, at times, you know, you will say you will beat them, you can make mistake and they will beat you. And anytime, maybe if I beat someone, someone for like three games consistently and he now beat me once, mm -hmm. the whole three points that I gather, the person will just wipe it at once. Wow. So I took, I took, I'm taking my time to play individual now, to know who to play with. I'm selecting people right now. <laughs> so I don't want my, my points to drop. <laughs> but, 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 but one thing is that everybody would like to play you. Exactly. 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 You are the champion. Exactly. Everybody, exactly. everybody wants to so play So how do you manage to make yeah, sure that you I'll see that? I play, I play. I don't I like playing, I will play them at least just like one or two games. Okay. If I see, like if I play uh, individual for like one, two, three games, then I will stop. If I maybe I win the person like two, then you won one, I will stop. That's what I do just for my to protect my right. my my uh, points. Okay. <laughs> so that my points will not drop just like that. Mm. For, for, because it's a bit if I'm meeting people that are close to my point, which I think if I beat them or if I lose, I won't lose much points. Okay. That's what I've been doing now. Uh, I know that, that there are plans to take uh, the game um, 
you know, because this day that the, the Nikon town is just like a pilot scheme, they have plans to take it to other clubs. Okay. What do you think this will do to other clubs too? By the time we take mm -hmm. the ranking system out and all that. If they take it to other clubs, it will be very, very interesting and I believe people will people will patronize the place more and they will have more people around playing a uh, pool okay. and by then we will have to be uh, doing competition from bar to bar okay. uh, so that we we'll know who is very good. Are you ready for that? I'm ready, I'm ready of course, I'm ready. Uh, Whenever it happens, I will go and try my skill because I believe by the time you meet tough people like myself, by the time I meet tough people like myself, at least um, I will be learning one or two things. Okay? So that's what I believe. Mm. So, 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 um, with time, do you think that this game is going to grow and it's going to be financially rewarded? Definitely, definitely, because I can see I'm watching it online and there are people that are. That they are top, they are in the top mm -hmm. that plays a uh, uh, pool, okay. and their styles and all the rest are, are very, very interesting. And me too, I would like to join them to be one of them. All right, so yeah. um, I've been talking to uh, Charles Agbesi, the winner of the main edition of the Nikon Town Club Super 4 Challenge. And uh, well, from uh, Ascent TV, we just want to say congratulations once again, Charles. Thank you. Thanks Thank for coming. All right, that's been Charles, and uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, it will be time for more gist as far as the new sport is concerned. Don't worry.